God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. During the time of Paul and the early Christian church, it was actually possible for Christians to be thrown into the arena, to be devoured by lions. This was part of the entertainment world. You got to remember, Christianity was not legal at that time. So did this happen to Paul? The answer is no. According to scripture, we never have Paul entering into the arena to be devoured by lions. So then why does Paul make reference to the lions, so to speak, in our reading for today? In verse 17, Paul wrote, I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Well, Obviously, it wasn't a physical lion here. Was Paul being a little melodramatic? Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. You see, being rescued from the lion's mouth could have, for the early Christians, been something really physical. But in today's world, we don't have arenas with lions in it. But yet, we also may find ourselves in the mouth of a lion. So what are we talking about? This is an illustration. An illustration in which Paul is saying something bad really happened to him. And when I mean bad, I mean really bad. So much it actually wasn't part of our text for today. They omitted verse 14, but let me just add it into there. From 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. We don't know exactly what the harm was. I can kind of have my suspicion it was probably some verbal attack. And maybe this person then rallied up others to continue that verbal attack. But here's the real hard part to all of that. Who hasn't had words spoken against them? But more than likely, this was someone even within the church. Now, would we expect within the Christian community for people to lash out against one another? Wouldn't we expect in the Christian community for people to always be nice to one another? To be encouraging to one another? But we need to realize, all of us, including pastors... We are sinners. And as sinners, guess what? We sin. We make mistakes. We lash out. So Paul, in our reading for today from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, writes this. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. So just picture being in a community people you would call your friends, people you interacted with, and then all of a sudden you're attacked and now you're standing alone and you might be thinking, where are my friends? Will they not at least stand with me? And if you've ever had that feeling of abandonment after such a verbal attack, you probably have an idea what Paul is going through. And you might even feel like yourself being in the mouth of a line and thinking, there is no hope for me. But then notice how Paul finishes that verse. Verse 16, he says, may it not be charged against them. And you might be thinking, Paul, what are you thinking? These, your friends, abandon you. You're left by yourself. And your response is, Lord, don't charge it against them. Sounds very familiar to the words that our Savior used when dying on the cross from Luke chapter 23, verse 34. He said, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them. Forgive them for abandoning friendship. Forgive them for abandoning a great evangelist. Forgive them for acting out in sin. Fortunately, we have a God who does forgive. 
That's why I would make a lousy God. Please don't elect me as God. Why? Because I'm not that generous. I'm not that loving and forgiving. Not compared to our Savior. Our Savior truly does forgive. And that's where Paul is pointing us. Not to the scars in his back. Because we probably all have various scars from people's attacks. We call them those, those stabs in the back. More of us. We probably do have a few of them. But notice where St. Paul leads us in the next verse. But the Lord stood by me. So he realized he wasn't alone. That the Lord stood by me. And Paul didn't end it there. The Lord stood by me and strengthened me. So that through me the message might be fully proclaimed to all and all the Gentiles might hear it. And then Paul ends that verse by saying, So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Paul perceived this as a verbal attack and he felt the pain. But he also knew he wasn't really alone. And God did indeed strengthen him. Notice that, and here's the hard part for us as Christians, the Lord did not slay those people who attacked Paul. The Lord did not slay those who abandoned Paul. Instead, the Lord let that attack stand. But then the Lord goes to the victim, to Paul, and says, I will strengthen you. I will rescue you from the mouth of the lion. These words are very important for us to realize. Why? Because, guess what? We still live in this world filled with sin. We haven't yet gone to paradise where there will be no more sin. And since we're still in this world, there will still be attacks upon us. The world around us attacks us. There will even be attacks in the church, even amongst good Lutherans. Why do I say that? Well, I would be lying to you if I told you I was never verbally attacked in my 30 years as a parish pastor. I would also be lying to you if I said, oh, by the way, I kept the Eighth Commandment perfectly. What is that Eighth Commandment? You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does it mean? Martin Luther reminds us, we should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbors, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him and speak well of him and explain everything in the kindest way. So here's the teaching point. We will be sinned against. People will bear false witness against us. But can we come up with the same conclusion that Paul did? Verse 18, the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow. And at this point, as I was writing my sermon, I came to this point, the point of thinking. I honestly believe this text should be preached at the installation of every pastor, every teacher, every deaconess, every church worker, and every leader in the church. Because as soon as we take on any leadership responsibility within the church, within the family, or even within the community. There will be attacks made upon us. But as those attacks come, come to the same conclusion that Paul came to, that our Savior is there by our side, you are not alone, that our Savior is there strengthening you, you. Oh, and by the way, this isn't just a Paulism, so to speak. Even in the Old Testament, the psalmist has very similar words and a very familiar psalm. Psalm 
chapter 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Notice that you're not alone, and notice you get comfort and strength by our Lord. Same concept. Just Old Testament versus New Testament. So again, even if that valley of the shadow of death is in a Lutheran church, is in your workplace, or even in your own home. Because sometimes these attacks come from very dear ones within our own household. The response is still the same. The Lord will strengthen you. You are not alone. Why? Because Paul understood what occurred when he was baptized? Let me bring in baptism for a moment from Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, one of other Paul's other letters. He wrote, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So what does Paul mean by putting on Christ? Is this some sort of new designer clothing label? label? The answer is no. It means to realize that when the water connected with the God's promise of his holy word is placed upon you, then God's name is placed upon you. You don't get to see it's almost like a watermark. It's there, but it's not very obvious. But does that watermark, does Christ's name being put upon you make a difference? I want to go to a different letter, this time from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The author John writes, Little children, you are from God. Reaffirming that adoption by holy baptism. You are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who is the he who is in you? Uh, that's the Holy Spirit that you receive through holy baptism. The Holy Spirit is within you. And that Holy Spirit is stronger than the world around you. Because who can open up the mouth of a lie? No one. You're not strong enough. Because if you were strong enough, you wouldn't be there in the first place. But the Holy Spirit, God Almighty, is strong enough and will rescue you from the lion to bring you to be with him for eternal life. Also, God heals your wounds, applies the forgiveness of sins to you, gives you his own body and blood to bring that healing. So when Satan lashes out against us, we need to realize that the spirit who is within us through baptism is stronger than the world. Oh, and by the way, you're not alone when Satan lashes out against us. Why do I say that? I want you to remember what happened to Jesus, not only with his death on the cross, Pontius Pilate, so forth down the line. That's easy to remember. But when the attacks come closer to you, like friends and family, they hurt even more. If you're thinking of Judas who would betray him, ah, that's another one. But there's one even better, who's even closer. From Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. I almost kind of picture that those words being very painful for Jesus to choke out. Peter, one of the closest disciples, the inner circle, so to speak, not getting the message, and Jesus has to call him out on it. Yes, these attacks from Satan come from the world. 
They can be in our workplace. They can be in our church. They can even be in your home. And these attacks are painful. So even when you feel like you are facing the arena, facing the line of this world, the workplace, your home, or even in the church, be assured you have a Savior who will rescue you from the mouth of the lion and who will strengthen you and feed you with his own body and blood to prepare you, to nourish you, and to guide you to your heavenly home when there will be no more pain, no more attacks, no more tears, and no more sorrows. But until that time, we put our faith and trust in Christ, who does indeed rescue us from the lion's mouth. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts, your minds, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.